he was looking at my sidearm and just kind of in a daze and I asked him, I said, hey, what are you, what are you thinking over there? He's like, well, you know, I'm really just thinking about how I can get that gun off your hip and get off this boat. Hey you and welcome. My name is Mike and in this video, we got a real whodunit. This story revolves around a young woman by the name of Lauren Agee and her extremely suspicious death. Lauren Agee was a 21 year old student from Tennessee who was found dead in a cove off Center Hill Lake near Nashville after attending Wakefest, a wakeboarding tournament on July 26, 2015. She apparently died of blunt force trauma and possible, emphasis on possible, drowning. However, what happened that night and then the actions of her friends that she was with, it's all ridiculously suspect. Let's get into what happened to Lauren Agee. In 2015, Lauren was living in Hendersonville, Tennessee with her mother, Sherry, and her mother's new husband. She was in her second year of studying criminal justice in college, and seemed to be in a loving relationship with her boyfriend. Many thought they would end up getting hitched. In July 2015, Lauren told her mother she would be heading off to Wakefest with her friend Hannah Palmer on the last weekend of July. Sherry poo-pooed that idea. Wakefest, while I have never personally been to it, seems like a real bro-fest. It's a party festival where the booze goes harder than the wakeboards. I mean, it sounds awesome. Sherry, who was also not a big fan of Hannah Palmer, who she said was a fair weather friend. Not a reliable person, someone who came in and out of Lauren's life like the wake of a board. I'm sorry, I need to stop using that analogy, it's just awful. And Hannah seemed more concerned with booze and boys than, you know, being Lauren's friend. Regardless, Lauren is going. Tough shit, mom. Lauren tells her mother Sherry they will be staying at a cabin on the lake, going down Friday, coming home Sunday. When the 25th of July arrived, Lauren packed her sleeping bag and some clothes, said goodbye to her mother and stepfather, and they made the drive to Center Hill Lake. By all accounts, they seemed to be very excited about the weekend ahead, posting photos on social media of themselves in the car, smiling and having a grand old time. Once they arrive at the lake, they were joined by Hannah's new boyfriend, Aaron Lilly, and his friend, Christopher Stout. And at this point, it becomes apparent they ain't staying in no cabin, and they made the... interesting decision to camp by a cliff on the lake. Now, some have said that Lauren didn't know there would be two boys staying with them. Anyway, it seems like Lauren wasn't prepared for camping outside. The only items she had with her were her sleeping bag, her phone, a change of clothes, and the only shoes she brought were flip-flops, not exactly cliffside safe. The area where they were camping was a steep cliffside with a 90-foot drop on one side and a 45-foot drop on the other. The boys brought a tent for Aaron and Hannah to sleep in, and a hammock where Lauren and Chris were to sleep. Obviously, Lauren was not too happy about this, as she had a boyfriend and she made it clear that she had no romantic interest in Chris. But they were there, they may as well try and have a good time, I suppose. So, after they dumped all their stuff there, they were like, alright, let's go. Cowabunga. And one of the easiest ways to you get back to the marina where the party was, when they were on a cliff, was to, um... Well, jump off the cliff. So the four of them jump off the cliff and into the water below. Now, Hannah, Chris and Aaron later reported that Lauren hit her head when she landed in the water following the cliff jump, and that she may have been slightly concussed. Then, on top of this, she proceeded to drink alcohol for more or less the rest of the day, which, on top of a concussion, means no good. However, reports from those who either saw or spoke to Lauren that night, they said she was in a great mood and didn't seem to be suffering from any of the symptoms of a concussion. So then, sometime later, between 12am and 2am, the group decided to head back. And at this point, Lauren had second thoughts about staying at the campsite. 
She asked a friend if she could stay with her instead, but was told there was no room at the cabin. Lauren then joined the others and they got ready to make their way back to their cliffside campsite. It's a cliff on both sides, so we're literally staying. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Now, as I've already said, it was on a cliff surrounded by rocks and at, you know, about 2 a.m. in the morning. They were all fairly pissed. However, they made it back in one piece. And this is really the last time we know Lauren was alive. This is the last confirmed picture taken of Lauren. Hard to say when it was, as it looks pretty bright out. As you can see, the hammock where Chris and Lauren were supposed to sleep, it looks precarious at best. And the next morning, Lauren was gone. Hannah, Aaron and Chris said that when they woke up, she had disappeared. And that she left her stuff, her shoes, her phone, under the hammock. Now, there are two things interesting about this. One is that there are only two ways out of the campsite, essentially. One is by jumping off the cliff into the water, and the other is to climb down this kind of steep rock area. And the second is that if she did stay in the hammock with Chris, if any of you have ever been in a hammock before, you'll know that they're not exactly stable, so he probably would have been quite aware if she had gotten out of it. So, when they apparently woke up and she was gone, they didn't report her missing. They just presumed, oh, she must have gone back to the marina for a nice, lovely pint. Her mother, Sherry, then starts to worry quite a bit, uh, as she hasn't heard from Lauren at all. Then, at approximately 4.45 p.m. on the afternoon of the 26th of July, a fisherman and his son were out on the lake when they spot something in the water. It was Lauren, face down, floating in the lake. Then the police arrive, right, and as they are attempting to remove Lauren's body from the cove, um, who rounds the corner but Aaron and Chris in a little canoe saying, Oh hey, we're looking for a friend, have you seen her? Oh shit. They ask the officers if they have stumbled across our friend. I mean, come on. One of the officers would later report that he believed this entire encounter was staged, and the boys knew where the body was long before the police did. The two boys were then questioned by police, obviously, and the police would later say that Chris and Aaron's demeanor was nervous and unsympathetic to their dead friend. New Tonight family and friends want to know how a 21-year-old Hendersonville woman died in Center Hill Lake. A fisherman actually discovered Lauren Agee's body Sunday afternoon. And tonight, uh, still questions remain about how Agee ended up in the water there. Friends say she camped this weekend on the edge of a cliff. Her body found Sunday in the water below. AG camped with friends from Hendersonville in hammocks at the edge of this cliff. They say the only way up, a rope. Her hammock just five feet away from the edge. DeKalb County Sheriff says the last anyone heard from her was Saturday night. Her body found in Center Hill Lake around four Sunday afternoon. It's weird. I mean, she was a lifeguard at the Providence Pool for maybe over a year or so. She knows how to swim. And the DeKalb County Sheriff says her death does not appear to be foul play. The autopsy results could take a few weeks. After the discovery of the body, the tree were taken back to the mainland, and this is when the story starts to <laughs> stink. Aaron's story was that Lauren never made it back to the camp with them after leaving the bar, but her things did. How unusual. Hannah claimed Lauren left the campsite in the early hours of the morning and got into a boat with some random boys. She stated that she saw all of Lauren's personal items under the hammock and so assumed she'd gone to meet other people, but would be back to collect her things so she wasn't too worried. Unlikely, uh, Lauren's friends and her mother and people would say Lauren was not the type of girl to go off with some random boys. And Lauren um, was also pretty pissed off that she had been paired with Chris when she had a boyfriend. She was uh, pretty uncomfortable about the whole thing. 
From the time I went to sleep to the time I went awake, there's nothing. It's just a void of what, what was she doing? What was she thinking? Was she peeing? Was she with somebody else? For, you know, I don't know. I was like, you know, don't worry. You know, going to the kind is make friends with anyone. And, right. Okay, I try to keep calm. I searched as much as I could without having to go to every single boat. I figured she would find us. Chris stated he believed Lauren got up in the middle of the night, but he didn't feel her leaving the hammock. As I've already said, if you've ever been in a hammock with another person, if they get up, you just gotta hold on and pray for dear life that you don't flip over. So, if she got up in the middle of the night, he probably would have noticed. If she had gotten up while the others were sleeping and fell off the cliff accidentally, they probably would have heard something. Also, she was found on the opposite side of their little cliff site. During the trip to the mainland, the officers described the trio as being very nervous, whispering to each other, with Aaron repeatedly saying, Don't mention anything. I'll do the talking. Aaron told Chris, you know, shut up, don't talk, I'll tell him the story. I'll tell him, don't say nothing, I'll tell him. That was odd to me. Well, what's there to tell? You know, why, why can't your friend talk? Immediately, that's red flags everywhere. When one of the officers asked them what they were thinking about, Aaron reportedly said, I'm thinking about how I'm gonna get that gun from your hip and get off this boat. Ooh, tough guy. Yeah, that definitely sounds like something a person who didn't murder their friend would say. He's totally innocent. Innocent people say that sort of stuff all the time. Lauren's body was then examined. The autopsy revealed Lauren had suffered blunt force trauma, as well as many other injuries. Broken fingers, a broken nose, bruises, and hemorrhaging on her back and thighs. Interestingly, Lauren had very little water in her lungs, so it doesn't point to drowning. Now, some have pointed out the possibility of dry drowning, uh, that's essentially when you don't get any water in your lungs and you're, or you get a little bit of water in your lungs and you're kind of as a defense mechanism, your, your uh, throat kind of spasms, so no more water will go in, but you will still drown because you can't breathe. It's also called delayed drowning in that um, it happens when you have gotten out of the water and are dry and then you, you drown, essentially, uh, your body just cuts off your oxygen supply. It's not really common though in adults, it's only really common in children and old people. And the fact that Lauren was found in the water, I don't think really points to dry drowning. I'm not an expert though, but I, I don't believe that one. Another interesting point during Lauren's autopsy was that the examiner noticed a distinct triangle shape on her chest, indicating that Lauren's chest had to have been pressed against something shaped like a triangle for a significant period of time after her death. So there was this weird triangle mark on her chest, indicating that somebody had like, whatever. Um, that triangle shape, almost like the tip of a canoe. Aaron and Chris's canoe had a folded metal section in the shape of a triangle that reportedly matched the mark found on Lauren's body exactly. Weird, huh? However, officials ruled the death as accidental and no foul play was suspected. They speculated that Lauren fell off the cliff while drunk, hit the side of the cliff as she fell, causing her injuries, and then suffered blunt force trauma when she entered the water, due to the force of her fall. Lauren's mother Sherry doesn't buy that for a single second. She actually uh, requested a re-examination of the case, but was denied. Good evening. New at six, a mysterious death at Wakefest two years ago continues to tug at the hearts of our community tonight. As News Channel 5's Alexandra Cohen explains, more than 10,000 people have signed a petition begging for the case to be reopened. Vicki Lauren's mom, Sherry Smith, has spent every waking moment trying to get to the bottom of what happened to her daughter. While police say her death was an accident, the investigators she's hired believe that is not the case. I keep in here a huge selection of pictures. Two years ago, Sherry Smith lost her daughter weeks before she would have turned 22. Lauren was a breath of life to everyone who knew her. And also a friend of Lauren's who uh, went to school with Lauren and also dated Aaron, Hannah's boyfriend, she, uh, she doesn't buy it either. She informed the police that while she was dating Aaron Lilly, 
He was very violent towards her. He was arrested on charges of domestic violence for biting and choking her during an altercation. She also revealed Chris Stout had a record and had been charged with three DUIs, including one for fleeing the scene of an accident. After they were questioned, Hannah and the two boys went home, and Chris posted this picture on his Instagram. The three friends then returned to their normal life. Hannah and Aaron continued dating, they got married, had a kid together, moved to Florida, and everything was hunky-dory. Lauren had a misadventure. Life goes on. Or not. Later, Sherry said she reached out to Hannah over Skype, asking for more information about the day of her daughter's death. Sherry said Hannah changed her story again, and told her that Lauren went to pee in the middle of the night and fell off the cliff. During this Skype call, Sherry said that Hannah's phone rang, and she heard Aaron tell Hannah to shut up and stick to the story. Sherry then hired a private investigator who had the autopsy re-examined. They discovered that Lauren had hemorrhaging in her throat, which could indicate choking. Huh. Didn't uh, Lauren's friend who dated Aaron say that he had choked her multiple times? Interesting. The private investigator also asked the police why a rape kit had never been performed on Lauren's body, and the police said, I shit you not, uh, Lauren had a tampon in, so therefore she couldn't have been assaulted. Right. The private investigator Sherry hired also did some experiments of her own, and found that if she fell from the side of the cliff where they were staying, which was the 90-foot side, the direction of the current at the time meant she could not have ended up floating into the cove where she was later found. If she fell from the other side of the cliff, the side of the cliff away from their campsite, where the cove actually was, she likely wouldn't have ended up in the water because of rocks and trees. Now, we're not done yet, because there's one more twist. If you thought those pictures of uh, the campsite, it looked uh, just a little bit big, there's only four people. You're right! There was another person with them over the weekend, Brixner Gambro. In the original statements taken from Hannah, Aaron and Chris, none of them mentioned him being there. Brixner, who was four years older than Lauren, it's really hard to find out more information about him. And by the time Sherry learned of him, he was out of sight and lawyered up, and the other three stopped talking, they shut up about the entire event. And while the private investigator continued her investigation, she met a new witness, a man by the name of Chris Brown. Not that Chris Brown. He was at the marina that night, and he said, Right at midnight, I was shocked to see a white male swimming toward the dock. I saw this young man climb up on the dock. The young man appeared extremely distraught and worn out. He was spitting up water for several minutes. The young man told us that he had almost drowned when he swam from the area of the cliff to the marina dock. And he said he was 100% sure that that was Aaron Lilly. He reported this to law enforcement, but nothing ever came of it. What this means is that it is just another discrepancy in the story Hannah, Chris and Aaron told. They never said Aaron went back to the marina that night. They said that when they got back to the cliffside between 12 and 2 a.m., they stayed there for the night and fell asleep. Lauren's mother filed a wrongful death suit. Brixner and the other three were named, but it was later dismissed by a judge. The court is extremely disappointed with the quality of testimony and the affidavits provided by the plaintiff in this matter. At best, they did not know what they were talking about, continued to make statements and accusations that they were utterly unqualified to make, and seemed to be just pulled out of the thin air. While the remaining experts' accusations may make for an exciting news broadcast or conspiracy theory, they have no place in a court of law. However, most recently in February 2019... It's a story Fox 17 News has been following for years now, and still no answers as to how Lauren Agee died. The 26-year-old's family has been left wondering what happened to the Hendersonville woman. But as Dennis Ferrier explains, half the fight has been just getting law enforcement to keep digging for those answers.
in court in Putnam County. They felt the judge was against them. We don't know about that, but tonight we know the judge was wrong and the Court of Appeals turned his ruling upside down. An appeals court ruled the family of Lauren AG has the right to pursue a wrongful death lawsuit. And that's the latest on that. We'll just have to see where it goes. But regardless of whether Lauren was murdered or accidentally died somehow, I mean, her friends are obviously incredibly suspicious and they definitely know exactly what happened to Lauren that night. And they definitely did something to her, otherwise they wouldn't all have completely different stories that are constantly changing. And that's the story of Lauren AG. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. If you'd like to see some more of my videos, please subscribe if you want to, and I will see you, as always, real soon in the next video. Take care of yourselves. Mike out.